Feather Sword is a flying evasion tank that can also block with overall balanced combat stats. Its initiative is around average, in some cases above average, accuracy around average, physical and magical attack similar. Uh, its magic defense is a little bit better than its physical defense, but it can supplement its physical defense by blocking passively or actively. And it also does have good evasion, which makes it a generally hard target to hit. It has four stamina, it's type flying, 150 mobility, so it's quite fast. It is sword, shield, flying, angel types. Uh, sword, shield are just the equipment. Flying is the property of being archer weak, as well as being able to fly over terrain. It also has the leader effect of flight, which just allows it to fly, as you'd expect. Angel type, as far as we know, doesn't have weaknesses. Maybe it does in the full game, but in the demo, it's not clear. The actual abilities it has, Spiral Sword, attack a single enemy, inflicts evasion minus 20, and grants evasion plus 20. When you combine this with the fact that this is an evasion tank, getting evasion plus 20 puts her at 68 evasion. Her current evasion is 48. That's pretty hard to hit. 68 evasion, you're basically like a thief now. I mean, thieves basically have 40 evasion. So this is like the equivalent of having a passive for free. It also has 100 physical potency and is ranged. Also take note of the fact that she has two active points and two passive points innately, like at all times. She just has both, she has two of both of these. So she can attack twice and she can attack at range, which means that if an enemy in the back is not explicitly being guarded by something, she can just attack it for free. And she also has this ability accelerates where if something acts before her, she can give herself initiative plus 20 and accuracy plus 30. So she can super accurately hit and she can become insanely fast if anything on the enemy team is faster than her. Uh, and you combine that with the fact that she can target backliners. She can usually kill backliners or at the very least put damage on them and have someone else like clean up her damage. So she can target backliners. She can fly. She can buff and debuff. Uh, debuff enemies, buff herself. Uh, she also gets shield smite at level 10. This is also very nice. Inflicts defense minus 20% to grants the user plus 20% defense. So it becomes more tanky, reduces enemy tanking, also ranged. So if there's like some enemy tank in the back line or if there's just some enemy tank you want to debuff, with her high initiative, she will allow your team to deal more damage to any target just by using this. And she will allow your team to more accurately hit just by using this. Uh, we also get Hone Slash level 30. This is a uh, three hits attack that has 70 potency. So if you were to hit for 10, damage the potency pushes it down to seven because it's a 0.7 times multiplier but it hits three times so you'd go from dealing 10 damage at a single hit 100 foot physical potency to 21 damage it also becomes true strike if users buffed and it's ranged so she basically at level 30 could drop something in the back line especially if she's buffed which she buffs herself with accelerate <laughs> pretty easily uh, but becomes true strike you could also like roll for crits too because each hit would roll for a crit so pretty powerful ability probably not getting it in the demo uh, but it's quite good now accelerate it has, it stacks so she can become so accurate that the only things that can dodge her are things that explicitly like evade so for example the evade ability but she basically can just bypass dodge tanks innately or things with high evasion through accelerate this does stack and she can use this multiple times uh, typically, you want to use other things, though. Maybe use it once at most. Uh, Dernal Guard, I think that's how you say that. Unlock the level 15. Activates before being hit by physical attack. Block an enemy attack with medium guard, which is a 50% damage reduction. Grants the user plus one passive point during the day. So she can just guard all day once she gets this thing. However, there's a way to get her guard early before you hit level 15. We'll go into that in a second. Uh, her other passive, unlocked at level 25. Discharge activates before attacking with an active skill. Consume all of the user's buffs, increasing attack power for one attack. Uh, the attack power increase is number of buffs consumed times 15%. So if you have three buffs on you, you're looking at a 45% damage increase, which is pretty decent. Uh, now, if you could get like five plus buffs on her, this could lead it, this could lend itself to one shotting with any of her attacks, which is quite nice. Also consider this could buff Hone Slash. So that could be like discharge hone slash could be like a huge nuke for like bosses or difficult to kill enemies. All right. So I have her on two passive skills. We'll go into those once we cover the builds. Let's go over the valor skill haste uh, negates allies wait time. So if an ally loses a battle and an enemy would first strike them, you can negate this. 
I'm fairly certain it doesn't affect rest because rest is its own thing. It's not, it could be considered wait time, but rest has different properties than wait time. So I don't think that's the case. Uh, all right. So for loadouts, let's, let's go over swords first. So she's on swords, right? And she can use a few different swords. She can use runic sword and go for two magic attacks. Now magic attack has 150 magical potency. And if you look at the magic attack on her build right now, it actually has decent stat. So she could go for tank busting on runic sword. She can go for uh, poison stacking on viper, on viper fang, which can be useful against certain enemies. So the way that like poison and burn work, if I'm poisoned and I attack something, if I use an active skill while poisoned, that's when I take the damage. Now, someone said it's 20% of the max HP for poison. I think that's accurate based on what I've seen. Uh, if you actually know, definitely drop a comment. Uh, but it does some kind of damage over time that seems to be percentage based. Uh, but if I use two active skills, I take poison damage twice. So if she poisons uh, one enemy, and, like just for the, her opening move, and then poisons a second enemy, the second enemy, unless it's stunned or something, and it like the way things work is you run through your initiative. So like the highest initiative goes, then the next one and so on down to the lowest. And then you take your second set of actions. So double poison could be good, but single poison is fine. If you can put it on something that has like at least two action points for big damage, it can still help to some degree, but overall runic sword is probably overall stronger uh, than poison slash. At least as far as I can tell, it seems better for like tank busting and then someone else can kill the things you'd want to poison. Uh, Hallowed Blade is also quite good on her. Max HP plus 5. Heal 10% when using an active skill. She uses an active skill at a minimum of twice per battle unless she gets like frozen or something. So you're looking at 20% heal and it's only slightly weaker than the sword she joins with, which also is really good. I uh, will go into that in a second. But 20% heal per, per battle is quite nice, especially if enemies have like lane nuke or they target her explicitly. So this can be pretty nice to use for just survivability. Uh, Heavenly Sword is definitely better for damage. Accuracy plus 10, evasion plus 10. So this puts her pa her passive evasion at 56 in this case, which is quite high. <laughs> and giving her hit plus 10 is also quite good. It also has a pretty high physical attack of 16. And when you combine this with Shield Smite or Spiral Sword, you're looking at pretty huge like buff and debuff combos and with spiral sword her evasion starts getting pretty ridiculously high uh, so yeah there's that let's double check that yeah plus 20 so she starts becoming ridiculous with that now her other default weapon default shield heaven swing shield uh, guard efficiency plus 25 percent guard rate plus 20 percent this is nice because it also gives her accuracy and evasion and her passive evasion becomes 66, which is pretty ridiculous. And you also have to consider that ground melee has a pretty low chance of hitting her. It has half the chance. So combined with her high evasion, typically ground melee will just miss her outright. And the only thing you really have to worry about are like archers. So this is not a bad thing to keep her on. You could also throw this on someone else that you want to hit fix or give evasion to. But her default setup is actually not bad at all. Or just like the accuracy of the invasion or the invasion the evasion uh, you could also run other things so for example if you want her to run cav hunters let's say she's in this formation where enemy calves that are using wild rush can hit her and the unit in front of her she can equip cav hunters and then cav guard gives you block enemy attack so first of all she gets a block like a, an explicit block that uses her passive points because early on she can't really use her passive points until she levels up uh, quite a bit outside of accelerating herself activates before being hit by physical attack block an enemy attack with medium guard now this includes enemy archers too so she can block with a medium guard against an archer and very likely survive the hit uh, becomes heavy guard and grants the user plus one passive point of enemy as cav so if there's an enemy cav you can just switch this temporarily and just gain plus one passive point and basically infinite guard and heavy guard is 75 percent damage reduction so if she doesn't dodge it and she does get hit, you can switch to this. So like if the forecast looks like she's getting hit, you can switch to this situationally or just have it available and just default to this, which is pretty safe to do. You can also get her the Holy Night Shield, which just is a constant source of medium block and also heal 10% when using active skill 
and passive increase to a physical defense and guard rate compared to her other options. Uh, so she gets more defense, higher guard rate of 10% more guard, and she also heals 10%. So if you run Holy Night Shield with Hallowed Blade, she heals 20%, 10% from this, 10% from this, per active skill, and she attacks, she does two active skills. So she heals 40% of her max HP per battle, which is pretty crazy, especially when you combine the fact that she has pretty good evasion. And you could also drop like Lapis Pendant and run uh, Lucky Coin on her so she can roll for crits while evading or run Silken Scarf for just the evasion if Lucky Coin is being used. But this is like an example of a more evasion tank uh, oriented build that also can boost ally damage. Uh, so it's like a combination of like healing plus evasion tanking. If you want to go pure evasion tanking, you just run her default items with Lucky Coin. And then she only has to worry about getting hit by archers. But if you have someone to block that, like if you have a lane block archer attacks on her, she's basically just unhittable now. And she also applies a boost, a buff to um, Clive with Powerful Call. So her main use case is debuffing enemies, defense, uh, becoming an avoid tank that just wastes enemy attacks, hitting ranged attacks in the enemy backline, and you can throw utility items on her. So like Dancer's Bracelet is perfect for her because it gives her something better than Accelerate to do with her passive points. So now she can buff Clive twice, plus 30% physical attack for allies next attack. He's going to be using... Uh, assaulting Lance several times a battle typically, so she's just going to damage boost that. And then she's also going to potentially damage boost him even further by reducing the defense of up to two different targets if you set up your shield smites correctly, or if you arrange uh, your order of operations for the combat. So like if you check the forecast and you're not killing, you can adjust, you can adjust like what she goes for and always just manually add uh, shield smite targets so like shield smart target one might be like target the armor up front damage boost clive whatever uh, and then shield smite two might be like target another specific thing that's high defense for example and you could do like first action second action and so on uh, or whatever actions whatever order you need but it's pretty nice units uh, you can also run runic sword and just go for two magic attacks to help guard bust uh, you could run black iron sword she has like crit options if you want to run like black iron sword. I don't think one of these has crits, does it? No, I don't think there's a crit shield. There might be, but I don't think I have it. I don't think there's a crit shield. But you could run like a crit build, so like lucky coin, uh, black iron sword, and then she could also run the, um, yeah, this, the dancers. She could go for crits herself, which is interesting. So she could go for like a, some kind of crit build if you really want it. So blade dance, so you get crit blade or crit rate plus 10 or plus five, sorry. And then you get plus 20% crit rate and plus 20% crit damage uh, after using an active skill. So she could go for like shield smite crits, for example, to debuff the, de the defense of the enemies, then crit boost herself up to two times. So she can just like go for backline nukes on crits. And then you get five crits from this five crit from this, 20 crit from this, and then 20 more crits from the blade dance, and then also increased crit damage. So she can go for a lot of different things. She can go for crits, she can go for support, she can go for avoid tanking, she can go for heal tanking. She can just buff an ally with the dancer's bracelet. She can also go for like this kind of like heal support thing. So like she can almost be like a healer. Uh, so let's say we run Hallowed Blade. You want her to just be like this weird heal thing. All right, so now she heals 20%, and then we could run Carnelian. All right, so now she heals for 60% of her own max HP per battle, because she has six, or she has three attacks, each healing 20%, and then at the end of combat, so what you could do for Accelerate, uh, you could just have this activate once, uh, so if passive points is two or more, for example, if you want to change it to that. And then she would just first aid lowest on your team. Uh, she still has Holy Guard, so you might want to either disable Accelerate uh, or have this be the condition. So like she would just she would just Holy Guard once, for example. 
on that condition. So if it's two or more, and then remove accelerate. So this is now like a super supportive build. She also attacks, so she debuffs defense of enemies, which increases your damage. She heals herself up to 60% per combat, like per like unit fight. And then she also heals someone at the end of battle. So this is like a super, like she can do literally everything. It's crazy. This is a really good unit. It's very flexible. Uh, but that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe if you found this useful. Definitely drop a comment as to what kind of tactics you run this unit. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.